Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my lesson is on scientific notation. If you're not currently a subscriber, I hope you'll consider subscribing today and registering for notifications of upcoming videos. So let's begin our lesson today. Today, you're gonna read numbers in scientific notation and you're gonna learn how to write numbers in scientific notation and in standard form. So we'll be taking numbers that are written in standard form and writing them in scientific notation and numbers that are written in scientific notation and write them in standard form. So we're gonna learn a lot today about scientific notation and what I want you thinking about as we go through the lesson is how can you determine if a number is in scientific notation? So that's a key point here, is that you are able to recognize a number in scientific nota notation and be able to convert it back and forth from standard form to scientific notation. So here we go. Here is what scientific notation is. It is a number. It's a number expressed as a product. Remember, product means multiply. And it consists of a factor that's greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So right here, this is the key part that we want to really have a big takeaway for today's lesson, is that there's a factor, and here's what that factor looks like, and it has to be equal to 1 or less than 10. So it cannot be equal to 10. So 1 or greater and less than 10. So what that really means is you're going to have a decimal, or you could have a whole number here, as long as your whole number is less than 10. So you have to have the smallest you can have right here as your factor is 1. The greatest you could have is 9 point something. As soon as you get to 10, you're, it's not in scientific notation. So another way of thinking about this is you can have one significant digit to the left of the decimal point. And 0 is not significant. So you can have a digit here of a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. You cannot have zero here to the left of the decimal for scientific notation, and you can't have 10. So as soon as you get into double digits here, then it's no longer in scientific notation. Now, key point, it's still a number. It still represents a value. It's just not written in scientific notation. So you have a factor, and usually you have the multiplication sign. Base 10, so we have a power with a base 10 and an exponent and your exponent has to be an integer. And we say integer because it can be negative. So your integer exponents, it can be negative integers, positive, and zero. So all the integers, all the whole numbers, zero, and their opposites. So once again, you have a product, there's your multiplication sign, you have a factor that's equal to one or more, but less than 10, and then you have a power of 10. So we have our power here, base 10, and an integer exponent. So there's our factor, and there's our power with an integer exponent. So given what we just reviewed, do you think that this number is written in scientific notation? True or false, and be able to explain. Go ahead and pause, think about it, and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Hopefully you came back with false. The factor is greater than 10. It's 10 or more. So since that it's greater than 10, it's 12, this number is not in scientific notation. So it still represents a value, but it's not a scientific notation. All right, try another one. Is this number written in scientific notation? Go ahead and pause and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. I hope you chose true. The factor is 1. It's equal to or greater than 1. And we have a power with an integer exponent. So this is in scientific notation. Try this one. Go ahead and pause. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So hopefully you picked false because the factor is less than 1. We do not have a significant digit to the left of the decimal point. We have zero here, and that's not significant. So this is not, although we have a power with an integer exponent, our factor disqualifies it from being scientific notation. So we're going to learn how to write numbers in scientific notation in three easy steps. 
So step one, I want you to think. Will the exponent of the power of 10 be positive or ne negative? So that is a really key point because that's usually I like my students to plan, make a plan. If the value greater than one or less than one is your factor, and now you're gonna set it up. So when we think about the number that we have when we're starting, if that number is greater than one, then we know that we're gonna have a positive exponent. If our number is less than one, so a fraction or a decimal, our number is going, our exponent's gonna be negative. So negative exponents, remember, represent fractional values. So if we have a decimal, we're gonna need a negative exponent. If we have a number great, one or greater, we're gonna need a positive exponent. So now that we have a plan, the next thing we wanna do is determine how we're gonna move the decimal point. So we're gonna move the decimal point so that we have one significant digit to the left of the decimal point. So a number that's one or greater and less than 10. And this is gonna be your factor. And don't forget to include all the digits. So it's not like you just have that move that decimal point and take one number after the decimal point. If you have six numbers, you have to have all six. Okay, you don't wanna change the value of the number you have. And remember, we're gonna practice. And the last step is to count. How many spaces did you move the decimal point? And that becomes your exponent. All right, let me model one for you. So let's write 9,726 in scientific notation. So the first thing we want to do is we want to think, will our exponent of the power of 10 be positive or negative? Seeing as this is a large number, it's way much greater than 1, we know that our exponent is going to be positive. So I put this little positive sign here just to make sure that we're not going to leave it there because we don't need to put a positive. But I want to note that I've already thought about that and I'm going to have a positive exponent. I've got my power, my base 10 ready for my power. I've got my multiplication sign to show my product and I'm just waiting for my other bits and pieces. Okay, step two, I'm gonna move the decimal point. So our decimal point is really right here right now to the right of the six because a whole number really has a decimal point. You could put decimal point zero, 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 right? So I need to move this so that I only have one digit to the left. So the, di the decimal point is now gonna be between the nine and the seven. So here it is, there's my factor, 9.726. Remember, you gotta keep all the digits, all the numbers need to stay there. This is your factor, okay? And then the last step is to count. How many places did I move that decimal point? One, two, three. That is my exponent. Now, you look at this and you say, well, that's weird. But if you think about it, 10 cubed is 1,000. 1,000 times 9.726 is equivalent to 9,726. So these are equivalent values, two different ways of writing it. This is what we call standard form, and this is scientific notation. Now, the number I've given you here, it's not really necessary to write it in scientific notation. The purpose of scientific notation is for really, really large numbers. Like when you start talking about traveling from here to the moon or Mars, those are very far distances and you need those powers of 10. Or a very small number. Think about something that you have to microscopic, that you have to look under a magnifying glass or a microscope to see it. It's so small and then you would have a negative exponent and it would be a really, really tiny number. So scientific notation is used in science so that it's easier to write really large numbers or really small numbers. All right, I would like you to try this one, okay? A little bit different, but I'd like you to go ahead and try it and see how you do. Go ahead and pause, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So step one was to think, and this number is smaller than one, so I know that my integer exponent needs to be negative. So I've made my plan. I have my space for my factor, and I'm going to multiply by a base 10, then it's going to have a negative exponent. Step two, I'm going to move the decimal point. So the decimal point's here, and I'm going to move it so that it's to the right of the five, so that I have one significant digit to the left, and that's going to be the number five. Remember, all of these zeros are not significant. Zero is not a significant number. So last step, 
three is to count. I moved this decimal point from here, one, two, three. So I moved it three spaces, so it's negative three. So my factor, if this is larger than your standard form number, you know this is gonna be a negative value. So 5.26 times 10 to the negative three is scientific notation for this value written in standard form. Now think about it. 10 to the negative three is one over 10 cubed, which is one one thousandth. And then you multiply that by this, and here you go. You have 526 ten thousandths. So, or 526 thousandths, sorry. And one more for you. I'd like you to pause the video, write this in scientific notation, and come back and hit play. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So, again, I'm not going to go through all the steps with you. Hopefully, you've gotten there. So, I have my power of 10 ready. I didn't put my positive sign here because I've already noted that it's greater than 1. I'm going to move my decimal point. So, there is right here one significant digit to the left. And my last is to count one, two, three, four, five, six. I went six digits. So my exponent is positive six because this number is greater than one. So there you have it, scientific notation, standard form. All right, one more, try this one. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So I am going to note that I need my base of 10 and I'm gonna have a negative exponent because this is a number smaller than one. I'm gonna move my decimal point to the right of three so that I have one significant digit to the left. And that means that I've moved the decimal point one, two, giving me an integer exponent of negative two. So 3.8193 multiplied by 10 to the negative two is scientific notation for this value. All right, now we're gonna talk about going from scientific notation back to standard form. And now we're just gonna do two easy steps. So step one, you want the absolute value of the exponent indicates how many spaces you need to move the decimal point. It also tells you the direction. So thinking about this, if you have a negative exponent, you're moving the decimal to the left because your number is getting smaller when it's in standard form. When you have a negative exponent, it represents a number less than one. Step two is still, it could be you're thinking right here, right? If it's a positive exponent, you're moving your decimal point to the right because a positive exponent represents a larger number. So note, if the exponent is negative in standard form, the value is less than one. If the exponent is positive in standard form, the value is greater than or equal to one. So your turn. I'm not going to model this one for you. I'd like to see if you can write this in standard form. Go ahead and pause. Come back and hit play. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So we're going to take our decimal point, which is here, and we need to keep our digits for eight, but that's only two. I need three more digits. So one, two, three. So you're going to fill in with zeros if you don't have enough digits. So remember, there's an invisible decimal point here. So 6.48 times 10 to the fifth is equivalent to 648,000. Please try this one. Go ahead and pause. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So you're going to need a lot of zeros. You ready? So we have all our significant digits that were given. Remember, your decimal point was right here, and we're going to go and fill in with zeros. So I'm here and I gotta go seven spaces to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it's usually noted that to the left, we'll put a zero here, even though it's not significant, but it's just kind of best practice. So again, if I was gonna go write this in scientific notation, I need to move this decimal point, sorry, right here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And because this number is less than one, 
we know that our exponent is negative 7. So using technology, when you go and use a calculator, scientific notation looks a little bit different than when you write it on paper. So we're going to interpret this calculator, okay? So you can see this 18 up here. What happens on a calculator is they don't write the base 10. So you have your factor and you have your exponent. So in scientific notation, this number, you take the number, the factor, and you're going to add the multiplication sign and your base 10, and they give you the exponent. So this little thing right here is raised. It's a superscript, right? That's your exponent. Then in standard form, we need to add, we have to move this decimal point 18 spaces to the right. Now, noting, a lot of times my students get confused and like, oh, I just add 18 zeros. No, you do not add 18 zeros. You're adding, you're moving the decimal point 18 spaces. So here we go. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So you can see why the calculator did not give you this answer. There's more numbers, digits, than there are on the calculator screen. So the calculator defaulted and gave you a number written in scientific notation. So this may have happened to you and you just didn't even know what it was. So again, here's your factor for your scientific notation and the exponent to your base 10. All right. You're often going to be asked to compare numbers written in different forms. You've probably already done that earlier in school, comparing decimals and fractions and percents. So you need to be able to order these and recognize whether or not one is larger or smaller than the other. So I'd like you to pause the video and consider these three numerical values in scientific notation and put them in order from least to greatest. Good luck. Go ahead and pause. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So our smallest value here is 1 times 10 to the negative 4. I knew that because it had the smallest value for its exponent. Okay, but I could also write it in decimal form. So if I wrote each one of these in standard form, then it would be easier to compare. The second or middle value is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 2, written in standard form is 0.01, and my largest value is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 1, which is 0.12. So you can see, as these are written in standard form, it's far easier to discern which one's the smallest and which one's the greatest. So I often recommend to my students that they do that. But the other key point to note is that I could have ordered these without doing this because of what I know about integer exponents. So these all had factors that were about 1, but negative 4 meant I was going to have to move the decimal point 4 spaces to the left, 2 spaces to the left, and only 1 space to the left. So I could have easily identified from the exponents which was the smallest and which was the largest. So that's our lesson on scientific notation. I hope you'll come back soon and uh, sign up for notifications to find out how to use multiplication and division, how to multiply and divide scientific notation. So please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you back here soon. Have a great day.